WrestleMania is a complete disaster. It makes absolutely positively no sense why they're continually doing this WrestleMania. If I was him, I would just take the safety measures and just play it safe and miss out on this one because you don't want to affect everybody in the ro- in the locker room and yourself and your families. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been this mad and disappointed about WWE's product since I started watching. Welcome everybody to the Ring Generals podcast. My name is Nick Ninad. Alongside me is Easy E. Eric. What's cooking, guys? And of course, my man, the RKJ Man. Let's talk that talk, y'all. Hypocritical Nick. <laughs> it's um it's an interesting time in the world uh, in the world of professional wrestling in the world of MMA in the world of uh, the world you know uh and uh, there's going to be a lot of negative stuff Using on this two. podcast we're just going to warn you guys real quick uh we have a lot to talk about this is kind of a pseudo emergency podcast uh we didn't expect to be really be talking about this stuff until next week we were going to kind of preview wrestlemania if i can put all of that in air quotes since i don't know what any of this is going to be um you know we're hearing news of superstars dropping out left and right we're hearing rumors in the mma world that ufc 249 is going to somehow continue on april 18th and we will go over the chris benoit uh, documentary uh, that was put on Vice TV. We'll give our thoughts on that really quickly. At the end or in the middle of this podcast, I don't really know how this is going to be structured. What I do know is we are going to start with WrestleMania because we can't stop talking about how bad the WWE is doing right now. So I'm going to give it off to RKJ, man, because I feel like he uh, he might go off like me first, and then I'll give it to you, Eric, and then I will say my piece about this situation because I've been angry all day but rkj take it away hey man it's been a terrible day for me but i always got enough room to shit on vince mcmahon look here's the thing (laughs) they talk about how it's too big for one night man so you had to split into two man i think it's too much shit for one night (laughs) that's what i think i think this whole wrestlemania is like when you poop and then all of a sudden it's so big you have to flush it two times in order to get the poop down. So that's the reason you gotta flush it down two or three times in order to get that giant dump from lunch down the toilet right now. This WrestleMania is a complete disaster. It makes absolutely positively no sense why they're continually doing this WrestleMania. And they had an opportunity a long time ago to fix the mistakes. They've constantly had opportunities, and yet they've constantly decided to bypass those bypass those opportunities. They've made a mistake at every single turn, and now their biggest superstar of the current generation, Roman Reigns, dropped out. Now, here's the problem. Here's, here's why I'm hearing Roman Reigns dropped out, according to Dave Meltzer and a couple of other sources going around. Apparently, The Miz was sick. Now, here's the biggest problem, okay? Stephanie McMahon in an interview with, I believe, Variety was talking about how the WWE was checking in superstars, how people were not allowed to be in a room, uh, more more than 10 in a room, how they were checking if your your temperature is above 100 degrees, you were not allowed in the building. So my question is this, how was The Miz allowed to be in the building if he was sick? How did he get past them? How? How did he get on that plane to get to Orlando? How was he allowed to wrestle in a match? And then he wrestled against the Usos. Now, we know what's going on with the coronavirus right now. Then you had Dana Brooke sick. You have Rey Mysterio sick. Their matches have been canceled, postponed. Their matches are done because they need to go to quarantine. They weren't feeling good. Then the Miz is sick. So I I just don't understand if the WWE is saying we're going to do these tapings, why is there not better security around these tapings? And who is letting this information get out? Who's letting somebody, who's telling Ryan Satin, hey, Roman Reigns decided he didn't want to do it tonight? Is it somebody in the WWE who wants to make Roman Reigns look bad, possibly? Or is it just a situation where they just like, oh, we know this thing is going to suck, so we're just going to give this dude, this dude who we know (laughs) is on their payroll, an opportunity to break a big story? I don't understand it. I don't get it. I'm being lenient right now, but the truth of the matter is this shit sucks. It's terrible, and this WrestleMania is going to be awful, and I'm deleting 
My network subscription, <laughs> as soon as WrestleMania is done, Nick, I've told you this before. I've said it. It's over. It's done. I'm done. I kept it for two years. Eric, what's your thoughts on this whole situation, man? Well, I don't know if Rey Mysterio is sick, though, because yeah, he's he in California. So with that being said, I think that Rey Mysterio can't go to Orlando due to California being on lockdown. So I think he's uh, he was there was a little bit of a sickness scare, but he's quarantining just in case. Okay, so nevertheless, he's not going to be at right, WrestleMania. Though. Right. Okay, so Rey Mysterio is taking the approach safely, you know, like every one of us. With that being said, Roman Reigns being pulled out, I get it because if I was him and just getting out of leukemia, and I talked about this with the RKJ man yesterday. And if I was him, I would just take the safety measures and just play it safe and miss out on this one because you don't want to affect everybody in the ro- in the locker room and yourself and your family. So with that being risk, with that risk being out there, and I'm pretty sure he's probably had like colleagues or his friends and his wife or his family telling him not to do this, and he probably said to himself, you know, I'm not going to do it. Yeah, it does kind of put me a little bit worried for Miz, too, because Miz, if you said that he's sick and he's in the building, wouldn't that be like a huge risk? And right now, there's a huge paranoia going on around, you know, we can't even tell the difference between what the regular flu is and what the virus is. So it's like really like this virus, it's like a invisible monster or like something like you can't get, you can't get it. You can't even find it. It's just so... It tricks, it tricks on you. It can even trick on Miz. So it does put a lot of wrestlers at risk. And and I really hope that this is somewhat of a wake-up call for the wrestling universe and Vince McMahon himself if he's willing to let these wrestlers just keep on continuing wrestle. And I thought I was going to give this, I thought I was going to give a lot of these, you know, these shows credit because saying that, hey, look, let now that there's no fans, let's not try to be hot on these guys. I'm going to give them a chance and see how it plays out. Let's see how Raw, SmackDown, and NXT play out. And these past few weeks, it hasn't been the same. It just feels so... It feels like the rehearsals, like the matches before they open the gates to us fans to get into the building. It feels like they're rehearsing the matches before we even get into the building, which is very, uh, very rare, very weird, and... I just hope that after this WrestleMania, after this show, after the end all be all, I really hope that these guys really take a break because as the number of cases being right, you know, rising, it does put a lot of wrestlers in fear and it does put them in a lot of risk. And I just hope that these guys just get a, you know, time off after this whole thing, because this is this virus. You don't know this thing can last for another couple months or more weeks or whatever. So and this this thing, Mr. McMahon, Mr. McMahon can't even, Mr. McMahon can try to fight it or try to kill it, but it's a it's a it's a thing that it's way out of Mr. McMahon's hands. I'm just gonna say that it's just way out of his hands. Any promoter right now in the wrestling industry, it is way out of their hands. They ain't no god. I'm sorry. That's the truth. Uh, okay, so you guys make great points. Um, I'm going to try to keep this as PG as possible. Uh, I have people in the other room here that are that are, are being quiet, so I don't want to start screaming or anything on this podcast. But Do it, Nick. I, I don't... <laughs> You're going to scare your dog. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been this mad and disappointed about WWE's product since I started watching. It's, I don't know what they're doing. Um, these matches fucking suck, okay? Uh, and it's it's not the wrestler's fault. Right. It's the fact that they were put in an extremely difficult situation where they can't do half of their job. And half of their job is to entertain the audience, okay? Uh, pro wrestling, I get it. It's on TV right now. AEW, uh, SmackDown, Raw, NXT. We get to watch it as fans, but nobody's reacting in any of the arenas. Nobody is giving these wrestlers the feedback that they need. So it's not their fault, 
okay? It, I, I just, I don't understand what the thought process is with the minds at the top of WWE, mainly Vince McMahon. I, I don't know why he just didn't postpone the event when the NBA Finals is going to be postponed, maybe canceled. The Stanley Cup Finals, same thing. The MLB season, they just agreed that we're going to start the season whenever it's completely safe and fans can be at the stadiums. And if worse comes as worse, we'll start the first month without fans. But then we're going to go into November and December, and we're, we're just we want we just want to play, right? Uh, soccer leagues all over the world, they're canceling, they're postponing. But for some reason, WrestleMania can't be canceled, even though it's not real. It's it literally works. not actual outcomes. It's not real guys fighting. I mean, I don't like to do this. And if there's a kid sitting here that doesn't know wrestling is, is quote unquote fake, it is. Okay. It's scripted. Yes. Their bodies are taking a beating. Yes. Uh, there are injuries that happen. Go, we'll talk about the Crispin Wall documentary and what that did to that man's head uh, after this. Stuff can happen. But the outcomes are not real. It's not like UFC. It's not like baseball. It's not like football. It's not like basketball. So for pro wrestling to keep going on, both companies, is ridiculous at this point because there's too many restrictions. And if we can't go outside, why the hell are we allowing guys to literally make physical contact with each other in a fake environment? I don't understand. Okay. But getting back to Vince, because it's not the wrestler's fault, like I'm trying to say. But that same criticism on Dana White, too. Uh, and we will get to that. We will get to that. Yes, I'm going to explode that Dana White, too. Uh, but... The difference with Dana White is that he has performers that want to fight. He has Khabib that wants to fight. He has Tony Ferguson that wants to fight. He has a bunch of fighters saying, pick a spot, we'll go fight, as long as it's safe, right? Vince McMahon's not doing that. He's going, we're filming this, 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 and this, and it's assumed that wrestlers pretty much should go and tape this stuff. And they're pigeonholed into being forced to perform at WrestleMania, which is essentially, like Eric said perfectly, a warm-up match in front of no fans. It's a, I forget the word you used, but it's rehearsed. a try. Yeah. I said rehearsed. That's it's a rehearsal. Insane. Exactly. It's a dress rehearsal. Um, we have things like boneyard matches happening, uh, a, a fun Firefly Funhouse match. I mean, what are we doing? Are we in fucking fifth grade here with this stuff? I mean, imagine Dana White doing this kind of stuff in the UFC. Like, just imagine. Imagine AEW doing any of this stuff. I mean, God. I just think that, and I said this on Twitter, and I don't know if this can actually happen, but I really think the heads at WWE besides Vince McMahon need to really look at this and understand that this is the biggest fuck-up this company has ever done, and Vince is going to tank this company in the ground. It's not... Because of the coronavirus that this company is going into the ground, it's because of Vince McMahon. Uh, other companies and businesses all around the world can blame the coronavirus for their businesses shutting down. We were just talking about right before this podcast, RKJ Man, you were saying that you saw businesses around your home going down. That's not because of the owner. It's because of this virus. It's because of the economy going down. But what Vince McMahon is doing, he's plummeting WWE. Okay? So... That's what I'm gonna say for now because I'm sure the shit will just get any, it will just get worse, and we'll talk about it next week again. But as of right now, I could not be less excited about a pro wrestling promotion than I am about WWE, and I really hope I don't have to be invested in WWE until the summer. I'm just gonna say it right there. I'm only going to exclusively watch AEW and independent wrestling until WWE gets its act together. I'm with you, RKJ man. I probably won't cancel my account because I like the old network stuff and I like the stuff on it. And I'm okay with uh, they, they, you know, I watch the Attitude Era stuff. I watch the Ruthless Aggression stuff. Uh, and I watch a lot of their documentaries. So I, I'm going to keep it there. But as far as watching Raw and SmackDown and NXT, I'm probably not going to watch any of it uh, for the foreseeable future and into the summer. Just this because of how bad this stuff has been. You know what's concerning to me is the fact that we're hearing stories Major superstars, major celebrities like Donovan Mitchell, Idris Elba, who have no symptoms whatsoever, 
becoming sick with the coronavirus, getting the coronavirus. So what if somebody who tested yep. well with the fever gets to go in there, but yet they have the coronavirus in them, but they feel no symptoms. They pass it on to Roman Reigns, a person who has a weakened immune system. Yep. Guess what? He gets the coronavirus, his life's in danger. 100%. It, it, I just don't understand why are we continuing to do this? And, you know, these shows have not been good. I'm disappointed, like you said, with how wrestling is reacting to this virus. Even AEW had a terrible show last week. The first week, they had a dynamite show, if you will. But this past week was one of its worst shows, honestly. You know, if you cannot perform, if you decide that we're going to do a wrestling show with this going on, that is your prerogative. But you need to make sure it's entertaining for me as a fan. I'm tired of seeing reruns. How many times are we going to see two and three matches that we've all seen? It's fucking so bad, bro. I I mean, I because here's the thing. I have the network. I don't need to watch that. I can go back. What I wanted to do, to be honest, was in this time, I assumed WWE would just postpone WrestleMania. I assumed... AEW will probably postpone. They'll go on an off season. I, I remember I was listening to Chris Jericho talk earlier today on his podcast and saying I was listening. I was half listening, but I remember him saying something about how they were going to kind of leave a cliffhanger sooner or later and go into a pseudo off season uh, because they assumed that the coronavirus would affect their show. I assume they will do that now. Uh, like you mentioned, RKJ man, their last show was was boring because they really didn't have anybody at ringside and it, it just it was. You know, they're matches, right? But matches, they need the fans. You need the outside interference. You need, you know, the commentary. And we were, you know, so, and like, again, it's not the wrestler's fault. Uh, but if they're going to put on a show, you got to go for it or you don't do it at all. I, I kind of agree with you on that. But for me, I don't want to see any wrestling anymore. If, I, if I'm going to shoot on WWE and give them shit, I have to say the AEW, more than likely, they probably have to shut it down, too. They're in the same state. For God's sake, both both companies doing this stuff right now. So um, as much as I want to see AEW, um, if they can't do it in the restrictions that, that we're, we're, we're put, currently put under, I don't want to see people get sick. So I'd rather them not wrestle, and I'd rather them we just wait, just like all sports, for it to happen in the summer or fall. That's, that's why I want to see. Okay, so let me talk to you guys about this. Now, a lot of people are saying – that uh, well, I heard one podcaster say how he thinks that uh, Roman Reigns was in a way kind of doing this too for the rest of the locker room. How there was reports coming out of the majority of the locker room wanted WrestleMania to be postponed, yep. and they still want it to be postponed up until they started taping it. Do you think Roman Reigns was thinking about that too, guys? Do you think he was thinking, you know what, I'm the I'm the locker room leader? as they've all come out and said that Roman Reigns is this generation's undertaker in terms of being the locker room leader. And he's saying, not only am I doing this for my health, I'm also doing this because, hey, the locker room doesn't want it either. Yeah, you know, the thing is with Roman is that he probably put it up for a vote for everybody to say, all right, who wants to vote on postponing WrestleMania? And then people raise their hands, and then there are those who probably said yes or no. Depends on how who you talk to. Um, Roman, and then he probably said, like, the majority of them said, yeah. And so Roman said that, okay. And then they said that, no, we're going to keep WrestleMania. And I think maybe Roman was probably backed up into a wall and said, you know what, I'm going to miss WrestleMania because I don't want anything to endanger my family and the people that you said, uh, Ryan, is a locker room leader. So that would also harm the wrestlers in the locker room. Roman Reigns, as much as as much as heat that he got, you know, during his run back in 2015, 2016, and then, you know, later on, like, yeah, him getting a lot of negative feedback, but him as a person, he, he is the right on this one. And I totally support him not competing at WrestleMania. And I think every wrestler should do that because really... If you if if one wrestler tests positive at WrestleMania or the up and coming weeks or whatever, and hopefully not, then the next person is going to get sick, and then the next person is, is going to get sick, and it spreads, and it spreads, it spreads, it spreads, and all of a sudden you're not going to have any wrestlers, and you're not going to have WrestleMania. Okay, that's that's just the point. It's just a domino effect that just keeps going, 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 and I think that's something that McMahon's not going to get it through. All right. 
He's not. He's not gonna get. It's not gonna get to because, like you're saying, people are gonna get sick and sick and sick. And what WWE's doing right now is they are bailing themselves out by trying to film it as quick as possible. Right? Let's just get it done so we can make our money and we can get the fuck out of here. But right? he's not making any money. It's twenty million dollars. I read that he's losing from from losing that weekend. So what's yeah. the point of doing WrestleMania? What's the point? There's none. I don't understand. That's what there's so much that doesn't uh, that people don't like understand about this. It's people on Twitter. It's my fucking parents who don't even watch the product. They're like, why? How? How could they do that right now? It's my brother. It's yeah. my dad. It's my mom. All saying, what is going on here? My fucking cat doesn't know what's going on, man. I mean, like, look. I, I don't, if, if there's one thing I can take away from this, at least. I'll be able to say at least those wrestlers are brave enough to do this. At least they're brave enough. Are they brave or are they stupid? That's but, point, though. Are, are, are they brave or are they stupid? It's either they're brave or they're forced to go out there. See, they're that's what I've been to, saying. Now, RK it's the Fence I, fairy dust. It's the fence fairy dust where you get manipulated until one day you just wake up and say, man, I've been bullshitted this whole time. Roman Reigns got it. Roman Reigns woke up too, almost too late, but he woke up. I don't understand, though, how The Miz was able to wrestle a match. And That's I got to look at the – how was he able to wrestle a match? He was sick. How, 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 how can he get into that building? And he's sick when the day before Stephanie McMahon was kind of bragging to Variety magazine. Make sure I get it right, Nick. I think it's Variety. She was talking in the interview about how they test every wrestler before they come in the building. And if their degree, if they're if they go over hundred degrees, then they're not allowed in the building. How they take special restrictions to make sure there's no more than ten people in a room, six feet, social distancing, all these things. And yet some way, somehow, the Miz gets in there, is allowed to wrestle sick against the Usos. It ticks the Usos off, which makes Roman Reigns say, nah, bro, I'm not wrestling. This is bullshit. They're unorganized. This is unorganized. This doesn't make any sense. For a company that is so big on organization, this is the most unorganized thing I've ever seen. We have every single day is something new with the tapings, somebody dropping out, and now you got a man who's sick, and your whole goal was to keep people away who were sick. Now he's coming into the environment and making other people sick. Somebody's got the coronavirus up in there. I'm well, sorry. I'll, Somebody has got it. Yeah, 100%. I, I agree with you. I, I can't imagine them having 60, 70 people in that place or however many people are at each show, and it's just not being spread at some point. And here's the other thing, too. You know, we're hearing these, and a lot of these are rumors, okay? Uh, because we yeah, alleged, yeah, like it's our favorite word he used on the show. Uh, but here's the other thing: Why is Miz showing up if he feels sick? Right? Like, what is? Did Miz get sick at the show? There's no way that he didn't feel a little bit shitty heading over to the the performance center, right? So I think if Miz is feeling sick. We got to put some blame on him for showing up and risking everybody's health, right? Like, if this indeed is what happened. The, here, If you guys don't know, okay? I think, RKJ, you said it earlier, but I think you kind of said it in jest. The rumor is that Roman Reigns heard uh, or saw The Miz sick, somehow knew The Miz was sick because his cousins, the Usos, were pissed that they were in a match with him, correct? This is right, RKJ, man? And so then Roman Reigns backed out and said, okay, well, I had leukemia. I'm at risk more than most people. I really can't get the coronavirus, uh, even though I'm in pretty good physical health, you know, on the outside, but on the inside, I'm not. So he bails. I also think he probably thought it was a shit storyline in the first place. So he's like, well, screw it. Nobody wanted to see me fight Goldberg anyways, right? (laughs) So nobody will be mad, right? Uh, So, you know, I... There's just so much to blame on this. And, and by the way, guys, if you didn't see Friday Night SmackDown, they're still promoting the damn match. So let me ask you guys a question. Who's facing Goldberg at WrestleMania? Who gives a shit? Wasn't it Strowman? Wasn't it Braun Strowman? Is it facing Braun Strowman? Oh, I don't know who it is. And if That's what Braun I saw. Strowman, I'm turning the TV off. I'm turning the TV off. and I'm canceling. not even turning it on. Well, I'm going to. I, I was planning to live it. tweet for Saturday and Sunday. I was going to try to live tweet it, but like the fact of the matter is this: Braun Strowman 
has become, he is this generation's millennial big show. He turns heel to face, heel to face, heel to face without nobody giving a damn. And then on top of that, his character has been ruined for the past few years. So why would I think he's credible enough to face Goldberg in a WrestleMania match? Why? Then I hear people saying, well, put him up against Matt Riddle. Well, guess what? Vince McMahon don't like Matt Riddle. Did I hear? And that, I don't want to ruin that. I I don't want to ruin that match right now. I actually want to watch that match. I want to watch that SummerSlam. I want to see Matt Riddle fight Brock Lesnar. I want to see, you know, I I don't want to see that ruined because all of these matches I don't want to watch because of the current situation. It's not, like I said, it's not the wrestler's fault except for Goldberg. Goldberg can fuck off. Okay. The guy didn't need to have the title in the first place. He didn't need to be, he didn't need to touch WrestleMania. Uh, unless he was going to do something with Cena or something like that, which was which would be fine, but he, he everybody else, I don't want to watch these amazing matches because of the situation and because Vince is forcing this down our throats, you know. And it's it, it, it's like here's the other thing, we've given Roman Reigns a lot of shit in the past, right? A lot of that wasn't his fault, okay. When you look at back on it, the, the the company put him in a bad situation, they pushed him too fast, and they kept pushing him down our throats annoyingly, right? Um, so it is kind of funny how now he's the baby face in all this, right? Like literally, he's I love Roman Reigns. He got cancer. I said it. The person, Joe, is so much cooler than the character Roman that you got to incorporate that character, that person into the character, yeah. which they started trying to do a little bit more and more. And people will start being more cool with Roman, but it just doesn't make any sense to me why we put this dude in a situation with leukemia in the past to wrestle in this type of environment. I think what they should have done is they should have sat with Roman and said, hey, look, we're going to go on with this show, okay? We know you've had leukemia in the past. Are you comfortable with doing this? Maybe they had it. Maybe he said yes. But they fucked it up when the security wasn't good enough. Human error. Somebody didn't take Miz's temperature or didn't pay attention to the Miz. Well enough to know that this man is sick. And guess what? If you're sick right now in today's age, you are a direct threat to everybody around you. It's true. Direct threat. And The Miz was a direct threat to everybody around him. And guess what? Now, Roman Reigns, their top superstar, has been knocked out. And The Miz has got to be quarantined. And good God, if he tests positive for for the coronavirus, good Lord Jesus. A lot of people are going to come down sick. Amen. It's going to be a lot of shit. I said it. Rome is burning. I said this last year when AEW is coming. It wasn't because of AEW. It's because by brick, by brick, by brick, the WWE as a company is falling apart, and it's because of Nero. His name is Vince McMahon. That's the reason. I can't disagree with you, Eric. I'll give you the last words on this subject, and then we will talk about the UFC. The only thing that I hope for is no matter how much heat – Miz is gonna get if this happens. I just hope he feels better, okay? Because I do not want to wish anything, any harm to any of these wrestlers. Because True. Yes. I don't want to. I don't want to wish no virus, no sickness, no none of that to any of them. Any of our favorite wrestlers, any of them that we love to cheer, any of them we love to boo. We do not want to have them either, you know, in the hospital, in a ventilator, and just going minutes. And so, you know, trying to survive this fucking yeah. virus. So that's that's what I'm hoping for, that none of this happens. Like, none of this happens. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. By the way, uh, I just realized that um, in all this time when I've been cussing out the, the WWE and, and, and uh, I've been so mad, I, I've been I've been using a Be My Valentine coffee cup. So it just shows you what's going on. I, 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 this quarantine is getting to me. OK, yeah. <laughs> see your oh. hair and your face is it's getting to you too it's yeah my hair is not doing it for me today i don't care uh i can't do anything about it i would go get a cut but i can't got a coma <laughs> all right so let's move on to a slightly less worse situation uh and, and it's it's uh it's it's ufc now here's the thing dana white i understand why he's trying to get this uh, event done, okay? It's a little different than WrestleMania, okay? Number one, UFC works somewhat without a crowd, 
okay? Uh, as we saw in that event where Kevin Lee headlined uh, in Brasilia, I was entertained. And if you put enough good fights on the card, I'll still be entertained without a crowd. You know, have a couple beers, drink with a couple buddies, and you watch the fights and you have a good time, right? Khabib and Tony Ferguson, although I do want a crowd uh, to watch that, I do want them to fight, yeah. you, you know, in, in the best circumstances possible. I understand that there is a UFC schedule to adhere of and that they can't just move around these major main events and that it's going to be hard to move it too far in the future knowing that this is a quote-unquote cursed fight, okay? <laughs> Fight's been tried to be done four times before this. And every single time something happens. I keep and telling once again, I that this is going to end in the first round. So that's the reason why he keeps delaying it. <laughs> well, well, well that's again, just that's a different opinion, Ryan. But I'm talking about the overall rivalry. We're talking about it's, the overall condition. It's not about rounds. It's talking about it's, how we've been trying to make this happen for many times. And then all of a sudden, a virus comes in, tries to delay it, tries to cancel it. And it's you can probably say this, this fight is cursed. You know? Yeah, so I think Dana White has some paranoia about this and just wants to get this fight over with in some ways and doesn't want to move it to May or June or July or August for something that happened. I mean, Tony Ferguson, the last fight, Ryan, tripped on a cable the day before the fights and tore his ACL, like doing press. Yeah. Uh, before that, weird little injuries to both Khabib and Tony Ferguson in the past. Um, none of those were going to be – oh, no, the, the Tony Ferguson fight was going to be – or it was going to be a title fight in Brooklyn two years ago. It was going to be. Almost two two years uh, to the, the day of the fight happening, but nonetheless. Um, you look at this situation, and it's it's April 18th, right? It's still a, a little bit – it's a little bit over three weeks away, right? Almost exactly three weeks away. Well, actually, if you're watching it, this podcast uh, on Saturday, it's three weeks away. And so I think Dana White's hoping uh, that the restrictions are, are put off a little bit. And like we've heard uh, from the government, they might scale back a lot of the lockdown stuff uh, before that April 18th date. Okay, so like I said, maybe Dana White has heard inside information. Um, and I said this on the last podcast. He is friends with President Trump. So maybe President Trump told him, hey, I'm probably going to scale back this stuff. So if you want to go ahead with that pay-per-view, you'll be able to do it in front of you know, a small audience or whatever, right? Wh whatever it is. Um, he's reportedly going to stack this card uh, better than originally was going to be stacked. We're, we're maybe going to see Francis Ngannou and Rosenstruck go at it. We might see other title fights. Um, so I don't know. I'm a little torn by this because obviously I want to watch the fights and the fighters themselves have been saying that they want to fight. It's not like the WWE where they're saying they want the event postponed. Um but in the grand scheme of things, Dana White's been a little insane lately with his responses to the media. And I just think overall, it's a time where we need to postpone things. And if I'm going to say that AEW and WWE need to postpone their shows at this point, I think that fight needs to be postponed as well. If the restrictions get taken off, well, that's different. We're all going to be able to leave our houses. Life's going to be a little different. But as of right now, I have to call for it. I can't be a hypocrite. I can't sit here and say that I, want, I don't want to watch wrestling, but I want to watch UFC. I think UFC should should, should postpone that event uh, and should just move every event kind of back a month. Move it into May, right? At that point, then restrictions at least will be probably somewhat pushed back. And, uh, and at worst, maybe put an international fight week, right? Because I don't think we've had any fights announced for that. So, yeah. uh, Eric, I'll give you the floor on this one. What, what, do, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, this latest news that the, the fight is 99.9 percent, .9%, the location's found, and it's going to happen. What are your thoughts? Well, as much as we've been trying to make this fight happen for years now, and been trying to happen when we were when it was ex announced back in December that it was going to happen in April, we were excited, trying not to jinx it. Me, you, and Jesse, we tried not to jinx it as much. Yep. Apparently. This virus came in and just swept up the entire, you know, sports, events, you know, you name it. So we're just throwing it out there. 
man, and, and it's really hard. Yeah, it is really hard for me to say this, but it is it is hard for me to say that the fact that you got to put you got to postpone this fight to another date because, you know, the only t- the only thing that things will get better really is what the number of people that can recover from this whole uh, pandemic problem and that we can find like some sort of like a, not like the actual vaccine, but like like a like a drug like the whatever. What was the what was the drug that um Trump said or whatever? Yeah, Hydro- chloroquine or something like that. The, 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 it's yeah. skeptical whether it works. I heard it worked yeah. for some people and it didn't work for other people. But right. there's also a lot of rumors well, that you can't get chloroquine on the street. So, right. I, but yeah, there is something. Yeah. We're hearing news of stuff. Yeah. Okay. So until like there's more news shed to light that we have some sort of drug or we have some sort something to cure people and we see a number of people getting cured little by little and we start seeing a little bit more improvement that's when we can go out little by little not every not all at the same time but like little by little um as soon as things start to see a little bit you know lightly things starting to take a little bit you know for the turn you know right so tony ferguson and khabib as much as i like to see them as much as i like to see them go at it they need to postpone it just for the well-being of you know those fighters i get it they want to fight but if you want to protect your fighters and you want to protect your company you want to protect the the tech people that try to make your company look good i postpone it to a later date a month later or two um international fight week like you said nick that could be added that could make the fight week stacked and that could make it a lot better and uh as you know as far as dana white goes i don't know what his intentions are to be honest i don't know what he's trying to do i I think that he's trying to make this fight happen in that institute over in uh, las vegas ufc institute but as of right now if i was him i postpone on on a different date until things little by little start to get a little bit better that's just my overall you know answer to that So look, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try not to get political with this because obviously I've stated my opinions about our president both on this podcast and in private, uh, you know. But I- I'm gonna say this right now because my GM, because I work in the restaurant industry, my GM came out and he said, "Yeah, the president said in two weeks this all is gonna get better. He's gonna ease the restrictions." And I'm gonna t- say the same thing I said to my GM and in our meetings, and I'm going to say to you guys, I do not rely on the president for this type of situation. I'm listening to the experts. The experts are saying that this is going to get a lot worse. I'm sorry for those of you out there who need a job. This is going to get a lot worse before it gets better, and the only way it can get better is if we social distance ourselves. These big events need to stop right now so the curve can flatten, so we can all go out, so we can all go make money. It's going to help the economy. Dana White and Vizek, man, honestly, they're reminding me of slave masters. You put your people out there, you put your slaves out there, and you let them do whatever, and no risk to yourself. Let Dana White and Vizek, man, go out there and wrestle by themselves. Let them go wrestle at WrestleMania or at UFC. What's, what is, what's this UFC one? 249. Let 249. Dana White go do something at UFC 249 physical and put his body at risk. And guess what? They're not going to want to do it. They'll cancel it. They're putting athletes. Dana White is putting athletes on the line. He's putting their livelihoods on the line all because he wants to make some green. And to me, that is not morally right. There is too many there. It's revealed what this coronavirus has revealed is the true fabric of America. And we have a lot of greedy, greedy motherfuckers out here like Dana White, like Vince McMahon, like that dude in Texas who was saying that the elderly people basically had to die in order to help the coronavirus. They had to be willing to die in order to help the economy from this coronavirus situation. Look, here's the problem. Okay. We all need to just be patient with the situation, and we're not being patient. I'm blessed to have a job in the restaurant business so I can go work, but I'm putting my life in danger. I don't know what could happen. I don't know what this person has who's giving me this $20 bill. It could have coronavirus on it. We're putting our lives at risk every single day, but guess what? We all need to be patient. We all need to wait this thing out for at least another month. We need to wait it out for at least another month. Slowly but surely, you can start doing little things, but sports cannot continue 
for another month. I'm sorry. I'm a big sports fan too. I love watching the WWE. I love watching AEW. I love watching basketball. Yes, I'm black, but I love hockey. I love <laughs> hockey. Okay. The stereotype does not exist with me. Just because I'm black, that does not mean I hate hockey. Okay. Oh, yep. I can't dance. Okay. I also, I also don't like watermelon. Okay. Here, <laughs> back to the matter. But I do like fried chicken and, and Kool Aid. That's fantastic. That's <laughs> Phenomenal. Here's the thing, man. Here's the thing. We need to wait this thing out. And Dana White and Vince Command are slave masters. Let them go take this risk out there. Let them put their body and livelihood on the line and risk coronavirus. And especially Vince, who's in the, is in the target range. Let him go risk his life and see what he says after that. Let's see if he's willing to put his livelihood on the line. Because that's all I heard. Vince will never actually do something that he wouldn't do himself. Well, let's prove it. Prove it. Get yeah. in that ring in WrestleMania. I want to see your ass in that ring in WrestleMania night. Night one and two. I want to see Dana White in that octagon night in, in, on USC 249 if he's going to have it. But to me, this is a selfish, greedy move made by a selfish individual. And the president of the United States is letting these guys do this. And I'm very disappointed because we need to take the time to listen to the experts. Like I said, I don't listen to the president of the United States when it comes to this. He doesn't really know what he's doing in this situation. He's being guided by experts. I'm listening to the experts, and the experts are saying to us, you need to stay your ass in the house. Okay? Stop licking damn toilet bowls and getting coronavirus. I'll tell you. I mean, I'll tell you what, since you brought up Dana White and Mr. McMahon should fight in the octagon or in the ring, I did tell you guys about how Mr. McMahon wanted to fight Dana White. He says it could be either one, it could be in the octagon, or it could be at WrestleMania in the ring. So why not the perfect time? Do it right now. Yeah, there you go. Now, we, hey, I'll watch, I'll watch WrestleMania if that happens. Yeah, why not? Oh, so yeah. let's do it. <laughs> you <know? Yeah. laughs> if Dana White would win, easy. Of course, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if Vince pulled something out of his sleeve. Brass knuckles, something like that. Right. <laughs> yeah. Sketchy old man. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, uh, I'm glad we kind of have different opinions. Well, different, but all the same opinions on this, that, that we don't think this, this event should happen. Um, it's just, you know, it's a difficult situation, but I think a lot, of, at least my mindset, and I think you guys know how much I love sports, I've kind of just been like, you know what? It's just the off season for everybody right now. Yeah. You know, every you know when, when baseball's not going on in in um, in November, December, and January, and, and a little bit of February, there's a void. I'm a little bored some days. I go, ah, time is baseball. You know, uh, during the off season in basketball, right? I you, you'll be like, oh yeah, I kind of miss the NBA finals, like you know all that the hockey, right? I can remember the Kings winning the Stanley Cup, and being like, ah, I can't let's let's get it going, right? Football, oh my God, it's the longest off season ever. Um, so right now, I just think all these events kind of need to have an off season right now. We just need to all take a break, and then we'll have a really sick and cool late summer and fall. Think right? about like, how great it's gonna be. Yeah. Usually there's a void during the summer. We're getting it right now. Think about how dope summer is gonna be. Everything is going to be on our television. I know. Everything. We're gonna. I mean, think about this in in the month of october we're probably going to get the nba finals the stanley cup finals the beginning of football season uh baseball playoff races will probably be be, be uh, or the playoffs if they shorten the season Jeez, i mean it's going to be insane you gotta have, like, we'll probably speed. have we'll yeah. probably have a uh you know an AEW pay-per-view in there at some point i know that deontay wilder and tyson fury just moved their third fight to october 3rd Think Wait. about how hot yeah. late this year is going to be. Ooh. And on top of that, 2020 is going to be real because we still got a fucking election to get out the way, guys. Exactly. I'm just saying. <laughs> how convenient an election right now during a freaking virus. How convenient. <laughs> oh, man. It's going to be phenomenal. But you guys just need to be patient. All you guys licking toilet bowls. And I saw this one lady who's was coughing and sneezing in a Philadelphia grocery store, and they had to throw away $35,000 worth of food because she was coughing as a, a sick prank, apparently, with this whole coronavirus thing. So she got charged on four counts of felony, of, uh, right. of terrorism. I, w- I was going to say before you said that, that I think that's the one time you could hit a woman. Uh, but you said she got felonies, so it's we're good. 
But I'll tell you what, man. People just love to see the world burn. They're like, hey, people uh, are getting sick. They're dying. So I'm going to take them with me. It's just a bunch of psychos out there, man. Yeah. I'm just going to put it out there. I see so, so, so many people just not caring. It's coming in. I'm just like, really? Seriously? Seriously, you can't just wait one month? You just got to get it in right now? You can't wait one month? <laughs> one month? And then it'll be freaking phenomenal. But you can't wait. It's ridiculous. Uh, so, yeah. UFC and WWE are doing their thing. Uh, we think a, a, a Well, did you... Okay, so do you guys think AEW should stop their stuff too? If they continue with shows like they did last week, they definitely should. I love oh. AEW. But I, I, in the interest of fairness, because I don't want people to say, oh, we give AEW credit sure. when they suck, and then WWE, right. when they suck, we shit on them. In the interest of fairness, that show last week, I still have not watched the rest of that show, Nick, when I texted you and I said, I had 30 minutes in, and I'm stopped watching. Because yeah. it was so bad. Yeah. I said, I'm not watching. There's only one thing I can take away from AEW's taping was that Cody's commentary. I thought it was pretty good. I mean, I'll take away that. I'm not gonna say everything was like perfect. I'm what did you think about Tony great. Schiavone? Which one? What did you think about Tony Schiavone's commentary? Uh, it looked like it was the time for them to like fool around and try to like you know experiment with like just having fun. So yeah, I think that like hey, since there's no crowd, I'll just you know mess around and tr- just have some fun with the commentary. But in the interest of fairness, if it was you know pro wrestling is pro wrestling, so. Like, the reason why people are getting a little bit, like, you know, amped up and people like ourselves as well is that, you know, res- nothing has ever stopped pro wrestling. There has never been, like, no off seasons. Nothing has ever stopped pro wrestling until something like this happens. So it's like... And maybe. Really, yeah. Uh, go ahead. No, it's just a matter of... Uh, just a matter of these people, like, you know, pro wrestling has never stopped pro wrestling. And without the fans, you know... They still continue pro wrestling. It's almost like saying pro wrestling never stops, even during a pandemic, even during a crisis like this. So I don't know how pro wrestling can be looked upon in the next tw- 10 to 20 years when we s- see something like that happen. You know, what what's next? You know, well, I'm going to be honest with you. When I see things like that Chris Benoit documentary on Vice, I start thinking, well, maybe if they had it all season, maybe things would be a hell of a lot better. Yeah. Good transition, uh, yeah. Ryan, because we want to talk about that real quick. I think we, I don't know how, what timing we are in this podcast. Obviously, you know, if you're watching this right now. Um, so you guys, you guys have seen the whole thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I saw the two episodes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, it, it, it brings back a, a lot of interesting things. I've done a lot of research on that whole scenario. I'm generally very fascinated by these murder mysteries and stuff like that. This obviously very close to home, considering that I've been a pro wrestling fan since 2005. And I'll state this: when this happened, it kind of it changed pro wrestling for me. And you know, when you first start watching it, I, as, as you guys can tell, I, you know, I'm relatively young. Um, 2005, I was I was a kid when I was watching it, and so pretty believable right somewhat you got the blood all that stuff for the first year or two you're watching it right i forget exactly when i started watching it sometime in fall of 2005 or something like that and uh so when this stuff happened with crispin wall i remember just thinking like oh that's not like uh that's not part of the wrestling of this that's that's real it it kind of took away the mystique and the kayfabeness or, or the What's the word for it? The 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 the, the fakeness of wrestling. Like I, at a, that point, you kind of have to know that it's fake, right? And, and so, as a young child, I remember this this incident really it kind of fucked up wrestling for me for a little bit. You know, it went back. I, I cannot tell you. I don't remember what happened after that stuff happened. Like I can't tell you what happened on the show after that or the pay per views after that. I, I really can only remember like going into 2008 because I think I just kind of, you know, was like, Oh, all right. That's a black eye. That's not good. That's a terrible situation. And, you know, I was too young to be watching the news at that time. So I didn't get all the CTE and all that stuff. And that hadn't been really put into the mainstream. Like it has football now. 
Uh, but at least for me, you know, this will always be a black eye on professional wrestling. But I do at least want to focus on one positive that came out of this. And it's 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 kind of not funny, but it's interesting that we're talking about on this podcast a a failure in protecting the wrestlers, as RKJ was saying with The Miz, uh, being allowed to be sick around these wrestlers. Well, back then, the wellness policy was terrible, and they outlined this in the Vice documentary. I do think the one good thing that came out of this Chris Benoit situation, and as well as Eddie Guerrero's death, was that the wellness policy has turned into a legitimate thing. And guys do get suspended for 30 days, and relatively... The guys that have been involved and have started in pro wrestling since the mid 2000s do not end up like the guys that started in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. So, uh, but as far as that situation goes, we all know it's terrible. Uh, but I do think that the the wellness policy thing was a good thing that came out of this. Uh, but I'll let you guys kind of take away some of the some of the, the the shittier parts of this if you want to. Um, and, and just kind of remembering and bringing it back, uh, what, what it was about. What, what, what was it like for you guys? I really don't know your guys' story as much. I remember we talked about this in New York last year, but tell your stories a little bit about how this situation affected you guys. Um, man, looking back at that time in 2007, Chris Benoit, when he passed away or when he did what he did, it was, uh, I was puzzled. I was shocked. At first, the news broke out, and then McMahon had to put out there this announcement saying that for what happened, and he did the tribute show. I just accepted it. I just accepted it until the news reports came in. And I just thought, okay, this is just something that's going to be brushed off. The next day, it's going to be investigated. And then it just kept going and going and going, and it just said, okay, this is getting a lot worse than I thought. This is like this is something's not right about this because why am I seeing more CTE scans? Why am I seeing like investigations? Why am I seeing you know um, Nancy Grace, Fox, Fox News, MSNBC, CNN, all these networks? They were all coming in, just flooding this whole thing about the the double murder suicide, and it was just like I just had to like tune into this whole thing, and all of us as a family, we were just checking this whole thing out. And we were looking at it, and I just try to puzzle this whole thing about why would Benoit do this? You know, why would Benoit do this? At first, the whole thing, the, the entire narrative was about steroids. Steroids, steroids, steroids. That was like the ultimate, the highlighted name to say this is what happens to wrestlers when they want to kill people, you know, or this is something that wrestling can, can get away with. And steroids was like the big biggest part but nobody really talked about how did this whole thing happen in the beginning with nancy daniel and and chris they they don't really talked about it until ted dibiase talked about it i think it was ted dibiase who was on cnn or one i think fox news who said that um something happened between the family they had problems before in the past and i started connecting some of these things that the injuries that ben was had like the flying headbutt and he just kept doing it over and over and over. And I'm like, damn, this this thing is like really like put a price on his head because Harley Race has said it to wrestlers saying that don't use it because this thing will yeah. completely screw up your spinal, you know, your spinal cord. And then Dynamite Kid did it. And then Dynamite Kid landed in the freaking wheelchair. And, and then Benoit did it. And you know, obviously, what happened to him. So it's unfortunate that this whole happened to Benoit because Benoit, you know, watching him like late nineties, early two thousands, he was actually one of my favorite guys because he just was pedal to the metal. He was just chiseled. And I just, what I liked about him, he was just so, you know, wrestled like so quick and so rapid and so strong and so stiff. That's what I liked about him. And just by seeing this documentary, I, you know, I, the only thing that I can just grab from this documentary and from what Jericho did say, and I think Jericho, you know, Jericho, he did his best to try to make this documentary sound a little bit at the end peacefully by reconnecting Nancy's uh, sister and Chris Benoit's son, David Benoit, reconnecting them and sort of try to like, you know, 
make amends or try to, you know, get together or try to reconnect that family, you know, strain that happened because of since 15 years ago. And he did make a good point about it. Jericho said that because of Benoit, he was this close on destroying wrestling. He was this close on destroying pro wrestling because of everything that happened. The thing that Chris Benoit loved, did, breathed, he completely was this close on destroying it. And that was a good point from Jericho. And yeah, I mean, taking away from it, it just brings back some of those times that I how I felt about Benoit. And obviously, a lot of people keep saying, why isn't Benoit in the Hall of Fame? Well, for his work, we love him. His work, we love him after what he's done. Great matches, the things that he's done with uh, a lot of people and throughout his career. But the things that he's done to his wife and his son, that obviously what happened, it's not going to be, it's it's going to be there in his legacy. It's it's buried. It's it's not, he's not going to be in the Hall of Fame. That's just it. Yeah. Um, look, when I heard that Chris Benoit passed away, I was very shocked. Um, for whatever reason, I don't know if anybody will ever pick up on this. I remember specifically, I don't know if it was Michael Cole or somebody saying that Chris Benoit and his family had died in a car accident. Um, and then obviously that's what I thought happened. But I do remember, just like the documentary was saying, I remember looking at William Regal kind of weird, like, what is he talking about? Like this is because I remember the it, I remember the Ray Mysterio doc uh, the Ray Mysterio SmackDown episode and how everybody was just so s- joyful talking about Ray Mysterio and how great uh, excuse me not Ray Mysterio Eddie Guerrero yeah. and talking about how Eddie Guerrero was such a, a great inspiration and how he was so such a joy to be around and how great of a wrestler he was how he inspired them all but I didn't really hear that from a lot of people with Chris Benoit. Now, obviously, we know what he did with his son and his wife, which is just, it's beyond terrible. But there's stories that have come out about him since he's died. I think Justin Roberts wrote in his book how much of a bully he was with him and JBL backstage. And that, to me, too, is really bad. Because, you know, a person like him... You know, who's supposed to be a respected veteran and backstage, who's supposed to take care of people, is kicking the Miz out for eating in the locker room. He He's doing stuff, bullying people and doing certain other things to Justin Roberts and other people. Just silly little things. People who take wrestling too seriously. He took wrestling so seriously that it cost him his very life. And you know what? Honestly... The WWE and its creative downfall can kind of start from the Chris Benoit situation. I think it's made Vince McMahon yep. have to reconsider a lot of the storylines he's wanted to do because, hey, if this wrestler gets uh, hurt in such a negative way, you know, it could look bad on my company. You know, it's it's had them to think, hey, we can't be as creative anymore. That's the reason why in 2008 they moved into the PG era because they wanted to clean their image. They had to clear, excuse me. They had to clear their image from Chris Benoit. It's it's such a sad thing, and it's so bad to see. But one thing I can take out of that uh, whole situation is I think his son David Benoit is a cool dude. Like I think he's a good dude, a yeah. good person. But unfortunately, the sins of the father is going to follow him around for the rest of his days, and it's not his fault. It's going to follow him for the rest of his days. He's, he's talked about how he kind of wanted to be a professional wrestler. You know, it, it's going to be hard for him with that last name to be in this business. You know, he's going to get blackballed from the WWE for sure. AEW may try to do something, but they're going to even get they, I imagine somebody's going to have to say no. It's going to be hard for him to make it in this business. And I feel sorry for him because of that. It's not his fault that his father wrestled so many times, didn't take a break. Because at certain points, yeah, what happened is his brain was terrible. What Vince McMahon was putting himself through, making these guys wrestle all this time, was terrible. But at the same time, I keep saying this, wrestlers need to step up. 
Yeah. They need to say when no is no. And you let Vince McMahon use, as I like to say, Vince dust. He sprinkles it on. You hear it. And you say, yeah, I can go another night. I can do this even though my neck's fucked up. I can do this even though I know I need a couple of weeks off. And guess what? You keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it. And where's the loyalty when Vince McMahon really, 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 when you need it from Vince, it's not there. It's nowhere to be found. So at the end of the day, it's just how things go in the professional wrestling industry. And I'm I'm happy, and I know we've talked about this, Nick and Eric, uh, off air, off the podcast, about how the wrestlers of today, we don't think they're going to be like the wrestlers of yesterday. We're not going to see so many addicted to pills and whatnot and drugs and who are dying these horrific deaths because they have other outside interests. Their bodies are a little bit more in better shape. They don't do the drugs and the partying that these other guys do. And maybe they don't have the notoriety, notoriety, notoriety as the other guys have had in the past. But at the same time, they're going to live longer. They're going to make more money at the end of the day. They're not going to die at 45, 50. You know what I'm saying? They're going to live long lives. So it's just sad. It, it's tough to see. Um, you know, but there were a couple of things that I thought about. Um, and there's two theories that are going out there. So I have an RKJ man theory. And then I have a theory that I've heard from other people. So the theory that I've heard from other people is that perhaps because this person was married to Nancy and because, well, apparently Chris Benoit stole Nancy away from her. I've heard the theory that maybe Kevin Sullivan may have had a part in that murder suicide situation. I disagree with that. I, I don't think I don't see anybody's that here for no. to do that. But what do you guys think about that? No, it's completely it's, it's completely ridiculous. I mean, you, you if you do any research on what happened in that scenario, I, I, I there's just no way. I think that's full blown conspiracy, and obviously people are gonna try it because the, it, it came out of nowhere, and because of Chris's nature to most of the fans. You know, we we didn't hear these stories about bullying, like you mentioned, or these stories about the domestic abuse he did against Nancy and stuff like that. We didn't hear those stories until only really like a couple of years ago, right? I can remember. I think I, I didn't hear these stories until. Uh, Nancy's sister went on Chris Jericho's podcast. I remember taking a long drive back from Arizona and listening to that whole thing and kind of understanding and be like, oh, Chris was not the guy that, not that, the, you know, obviously what Chris did was terrible, but he did seem like a pretty good guy. And now it's come out that he really wasn't a good guy. And you can attribute that to the CTE or whatever, the steroids, but still, you know, so, but no, I don't think it was Kevin Sullivan. I, I think that's completely ridiculous. I did hear something about that, about Kevin Sullivan playing a big part in that role. But I think that a lot of people who side with Chris Benoit, you're going to get like a lot of those kind of fans who are going to defend Chris Benoit by saying Kevin Sullivan did it. He killed Chris Benoit and his wife as a way of an act of revenge from being stolen by Chris Benoit. So you're going to get something like that because, you know, after many years just being with uh you know nancy being with benoit and then the stories going on around how chris benoit has been trying to you know keep his distance away from nancy or they've been having domestic abuse or another fact is that since eddie passed away um benoit felt lost benoit felt like that comfort that he had with eddie played a big part and he's not there anymore so he completely cut off almost everyone in his life. And the next thing he had to do was just wrestle because that's the only thing they could love. And just Eddie being, you know, going on to another, just leaving this earth just uh, made things hard for Chris Benoit. And Chris Benoit, you know, he that also kind of strained something with his uh, family, with his wife. And there was also messages saying that, uh, I think there was like one story about how Bob Holly said that uh, he got a phone call saying that, no, yeah, Nancy is being like a witch. She's being like Satan, being playing the part of Satan. And like, I guess in a way she was uh, kind of being like a dictator, you know, in the house. So there was fights between those two. And that was before the whole thing happened. And then, uh, 
Yeah, I mean, it was just months and months and months of build and build until this whole thing happened with Benoit and Nancy. So I believe more about what happened with Nancy and Benoit, how they had domestic abuse, how it just keeps building and building. And and the whole thing about how Chris was trying to find, you know, Google searching the quickest way to uh, yeah. snap, I snap mean- neck. Exactly. I mean, the, the Kevin Sullivan, it's just, yeah. it's the same as, you know, you can compare it to another high profile thing. It's the same as if you don't think OJ killed his wife. You know, it's it's the same thing. It's like, there's so much evidence behind it. Let's not, I get this, there's some idiots out there that, that, that want to defend Chris Benoit for some weird reason. I don't understand it. It's pretty clear. Um, I think it's people trying to deflect and not want to do that. But no, I don't, I don't think Kevin Sullivan had anything do with this i I did want to mention something about the you talked about the pain pills you know you chris benoit obviously eddie guerrero um you you know dying because essentially because of the pills and stuff like that uh you know kurt angle my god was was really messed up on pills back then brock lesnar in some ways had to retire because of his pill addiction at some point too or he had to leave wwe i mean countless others uh, guys like Batista and Triple H and John Cena escaped somewhat of this kind of thing. But, I, I, I mean, I can't imagine how many wrestlers were really still doing that kind of stuff in the background. And that's why I kind of mentioned at the beginning of this, this part of the, the podcast was that at least when you look at it from now, obviously it's terrible what happened to Nancy and Daniel and, and Chris. But what we have had um, now with the wellness policy, we're not going to have that stuff more than likely happen again under, you know, some crazy circumstances, something happens, but I don't think it can be attributed to, you know, the concussions in the ring and, and the steroid abuse and the pill addiction. It's a, so I, I do think if there's something to look f- to get from this documentary, it's that do- pro- professional wrestling will be safer now than it ever was. Well, here's the thing, Nick. I don't necessarily agree that the wellness policy is actually as ironclad as you think it is. Because I didn't say I didn't say it was ironclad. I say it's better than it was. Okay. Well, part timers are still not allowed. Don't have to be tested. Brock Lesnar is not going to get tested. John Cena doesn't have to get tested. So you can come in and do steroids and do hormones and whatever else you want to do and get away with it because you're a part timer. So, I mean, in my opinion, the wellness policy, while, yeah, it's improved since then, since when Nancy was writing Chris and telling him we know the wellness policy is a joke, it still needs to get better. And I still believe deep down inside that if a major superstar like John Cena was hit for a wellness policy, they would find some way to hide it because he is too big of a superstar for you to be without for 30 days. Roman Reigns, during his time when he got hit with his wellness policy— he was the most notable one, but he was still coming to his own as a performer, as a main superstar. John Cena was still kind of around, so it wasn't it wasn't going to hurt him as much. But now, if Roman Reigns were to get docked for it with John Cena being gone, that would absolutely destroy the company. We're talking about how WrestleMania is destroyed just by Roman Reigns walking out because of leukemia. What about if he got a second strike on a wellness policy, which is like, what, 60 days? Uh, I, I don't know what it is for the strike policy, but, but it, it's really tough. Um, but I, I wanted to ask this question real quick. Um, we saw the relationship that Chris Benoit and Eddie Guerrero had, and we saw once Eddie died, Chris Benoit just cut off. And I think Chris Jericho said something. And remind me if I'm wrong, Nick. He said how it's almost like the loss of a spouse. When Eddie died, right? Is That's that what, what he said. He felt, uh, he felt Chris felt Benoit felt that. Okay. The, the way, yeah, yeah. I think Vicky also echo, echoed that. Vicky Guerrero also echoed that too. We heard the stories about him crying and all that stuff. So uh, the you know. the look. Okay. I, I it's it's not bad. Okay, but do we think there was something more? than friendship between Chris Benoit and Eddie Guerrero. Do we think there was something more there? Do we think there's something there that could make him go off the rails so much to that point at he dies and then he loses it? Do we think that that's a possibility? 
No, I, I, I just think it was, you know, I think Chris was already already messed up. I mean, he had CTE, clearly. Um, you know, it, they said he had the brain of an 80-year-old 80, 80 person. It reminds me kind of the Aaron Hernandez story a little bit with the way that the CTE and the brain worked. Um, and so, no, I, just, I, I think Chris Benoit was emotionally unstable, uh, and he just wasn't able to process the loss of his, his best friend, you know, and he didn't process it like a normal person because he didn't have the brain of a normal person. And I think that attributes a lot. And then you add steroids into the mix because he clearly had steroids. Whatever WWE wanted to say back then, uh, you know, it's a complete joke because we saw, you know, steroids clearly were a part of it. I don't think steroids were the main reason. I think the CTE was, just in my personal opinion. Uh, but I, I think I think this is not, you know, this is, it, it wasn't, Chris Benoit did not have a normal brain those last couple of years. So really a lot of his decisions, you have to kind of question and wonder why he did certain things. And I think that's what the, the, the big mystery behind this is because of that, because Chris made so many weird, rash decisions with the way he grieved and with the way he kind of processed that whole Eddie thing while also wrestling and, you know, a bunch of other stuff and then ultimately doing what he did. So I just, I don't think his head was there from the last couple of years of his life, to be honest. Yeah. Eric, what do you think? Yeah, you know, losing that guide, losing that person that has been sort of like helping you out throughout your entire career and then trying to help each other battle their demons, you know, because we all know Eddie has also had their, his demons battle his way through, obviously became successful at the very end, Benoit admires that. I'm pretty sure he admired that for a fact. And at the same time, you know, when you're when you don't have that one person that's been around with you for the past 20 years, and he passes away, it's very hard to process all that because that person's not there with you anymore. And for Benoit, since Chavo says that he has always been a guy who never really showed any emotion, who's a chiseled stone dude, very quiet guy. And then when he Eddie passed away, you know, Benoit just absolutely lost it. And this was probably the only sign when you could see that Benoit was just completely lost it. And then they when they gave that journal to Benoit to him to write to Eddie was kind of a way to open up slowly but surely. But still the injuries, the concussions and him having the brain of an Alzheimer's 85 year old man, that just did not make things any better because Benoit from paycheck to t- paycheck, the only thing he could do was just wrestle, wrestle, wrestle. And that was also another way for him to sort of like cover up the pain when he lost to Eddie. So not just the, not just the steroids or the pills. It was also pro wrestling because pro wrestling was something that he also loved. I think there are three things that he loved. Pro wrestling, his family, and his his uh, best friend Eddie, I think so. And then losing Eddie, he only had two things. So I think he was like left in a position where he couldn't really think straight, like you said, Nick. And I think just uh, Eddie being playing a big part of that. You know, if something you know something were to happen like to us like that, I mean, we wouldn't go around and just start randomly kill people like uh, we wouldn't do that it's just that ben ben wall by that time having just chair shots to the head and just having concussions and christopher Nowinski, who did a research on his brain it, it just made sense you know it his just brain was just i think at that t- at that point it was just helpless to try to uh, medicate it or try to like heal it but by that, yeah by that time i think christopher Nowinski said that yeah he had a huge concussion just nothing but concussions his brain he that yeah. happened you know yeah i i do think also um when you you, you make a good point you, you love three things in his life he lost eddie he was coming sort of the end of his uh of his pro wrestling career too i i, I remember hearing a lot of people saying just doing research before that that documentary came out that they said yeah, they were kind of starting to offer him like backstage roles, like to be, you know, kind of a producer and, and an agent, uh, like pro wrestling calls it. And so I think, you know, not only did he lose Eddie, um, but then he lost his, he was probably going to lose his career too. He probably wasn't really going to be able to wrestle again. They probably weren't going to book him in anything big. 
you know, he'd already had his big moment at WrestleMania 20 a couple of years prior. So, you know, I think there was a lot, a lot of factors here. And, and I think it does take a lot, a lot of factors for something that horrible to happen. So I don't think it was just one thing. I think it was the combination of concussions and, and, and the loss of Eddie and the overall just, you know, uh, feeling of kind of lostness in his life, which I personally attribute just to his brain not being fully there. And you can you can say that you, you can't blame him for that, but it, it's it is something terrible. We saw this with Junior Seau. Um, we've seen this with countless other professional football players that have done crazy things uh, out of their personality, and and, and, and with Benoit. Uh, as well, uh, that, that obviously he did one of the worst you possibly could do. So, yeah, it's just my take on it. But yeah, it just it just seems weird when Chris Jericho made that statement and just looking how much he deteriorated once Eddie Guerrero died. And, and Chris Jericho saying that it just I was just some click and I was like something's not right here. And you know, there's things that people tell you. And then there's people, things that people don't tell you, but you can kind of figure it out. There seems to be a lot of things to this story that still I don't think we're hearing about. And I, I don't know if somebody has, has, has hit it. I don't know if somebody knows more. We, you know, a lot of those facts I heard on the documentary, honestly, a lot of those things with the death and whatnot, I've already heard before. Um, so something had to have happened. And, you know, I saw this crazy thing on Reddit where somebody was saying how if you look at Chris Nowinski's new, his foundation, you could see that the WWE kind of sort of bought him out because Triple H is on the board of directors. So he, he, you know, so people are alleging that maybe there's something going on there. I, I don't know, but there just seems to be so much more to this story than what it is. I didn't know that Chris Benoit did those things in terms of domestic abuse or allegedly did those things with domestic abuse to Nancy, but there's something there, and I don't even know if I want to uncover it. I honestly don't. But as a wrestling fan, it just leaves me wondering and thinking, what the hell happened that night? And yeah. what happened to this man's brain? What was going on with a relationship between Eddie Guerrero so much to the point that he just deteriorated like that? He, he had other friends. He had Chris Jericho. He had Dee Malenko. Um, Perry Saturn was uh, a friend. You know what I'm saying? He had a Chavo. He had plenty of other people around him who could have supported mm-hmm. him. Instead of leaning into that support group, he leaned away from it. It, it just, I don't know. It, it's it's too much. Well, really sad, man. Well, I mean, Chris, he was the kind of quiet guy from what a lot of people say. And Chris, I think it's just, uh, and, and Jericho said that even after Eddie passed, he also said that the relationship between Jericho and Benoit wasn't really there anymore. So that's also another factor right there that maybe Chris yeah. was just straining away. It just depends on the kind of circle that he was around with. But uh, really the only person who can tell you what really happened that night is Chris himself. Chris Benoit. Not even that night, multiple nights, which is, makes it so much yeah, worse. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, forgot about that. Um, we won't get into the details. Watch the documentary. You'll understand what I'm saying with that. Um, but yeah, okay. So did we, we we've got enough with this podcast with the negative stuff. We we we'll probably <laughs> we'll, we'll try to be positive uh, next podcast. But uh, there's just nothing. Put me in a bad, it's a sad mood, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's man. <laughs> You know. hey man, keep your head up, man. If you're if you're out there struggling because of this coronavirus, keep your head up. Trouble don't last always. Just just stay positive. Stay your ass inside, though. Okay, don't get me coronavirus. Right. Yeah, don't go, review, don't go right? to the restaurant. Your I thought you were <laughs> Not go where I am at. Exactly. But uh, yeah, for the ring generals, uh, we'll likely be talking. I guess I, I, maybe we do a preview show. I really don't want to, but. I, do any more pre i don't want to do a yeah but, but so we'll have some content coming at you next week uh before wrestlemania happens and and we'll kind of discuss what's what what the new the news because it seems like there is news that comes out every single day from this maybe whole breaking thing. news yeah. yeah anything else uh, maybe our- who knows maybe before we do another podcast somebody will come down with corona yeah. oh, and i hope that doesn't happen rkj take it away hey man like comment and subscribe but as always 
Raise a glass in the sky and salute the ring generals. It's the sauce, Alexander, and you're watching the Ring General Podcast. Turn this man around, turn this man around, subscribe, like, and comment. But raise a glass in the sky and salute the ring generals. That's right, that's right.